Welcome back. In the previous lecture, we saw the basic definitions of uh, submodular functions, and, um, and we saw some examples. In uh, this lecture, we're going to study the greedy algorithm. And in particular, we're going to look at it for, uh, for, the, following, uh, for the following problem. So let's uh, let i be some collection of subsets of all the subsets of our ground set E. And let's assume that uh, this is a down monotone class of sets. So let I be down monotone. And remember that all this means is that if uh, I is an element of this set, calligraphic I, and if J is any subset of I, then J is also an element of I. So this is a property that uh, matroid independent sets satisfy, but, but uh, remember there's the other exchange property as well uh, that we're not requiring here. Otherwise, we would just be in a matroid setting. And now the problem that uh, we care about is the following. We want to study the problem of maximizing f of i, uh, f of i where f is submodular, subject to the constraint that i belongs to this set. Again, for f submodular. Now let's define the greedy, uh, the greedy algorithm for, for this problem. We initialize, we keep track of two sets, S and A. And both of these are initialized to the empty set. And then the greedy algorithm consists of the following iteration. At every, at every, uh, at every step, we look at our set S and we ask, which of the elements that are not in S could I add to S and still end up in my set I? And all of those are candidates for my greedy algorithm. And I'm basically going to choose the one with the best marginal value. So let's write this down. So A is going to be my set of candidate elements in this round. So in other words, A is going to consist of all elements E of the ground set that don't belong in S, such that S union E is still in I. In other words, these are all the elements that I could add and still be uh, feasible. Now, if there's no more elements that I could add and still be feasible, then we have to stop. But if that's not the case, so in other words, if A is not the empty set, then I just look through all of them and I pick the element that has the largest marginal value with respect to my current set S. In other words, I choose that element E that is the solution to the argmax over all elements of A of, remember our notation from the previous lecture, F sub S of E prime, which again, recall we defined as the value of F of S plus E prime minus F of S. This is the, val the, 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 the element E prime that boosts my value as much as possible. And then I add that element to, uh, to S. And that's it, and I output S. Uh, now an exercise for you, to, uh, for you to do is to verify that if F is a rank function of a matroid, um, and I is my independent sets, I'm sorry, if, if, if F is, is uh, the function that we get from a weight function of a matroid. So if I is a matroid, in other words, if, the, it's, if it's the independent system of a matroid, and if F is given by a weight function, in other words, if F of S is equal to the sum of weights, WI, where I is an S, then this is the greedy 
<clears throat> algorithm we gave for finding a maximum weight independent set of a matroid, and in particular, it's optimal. And as we saw, it is optimal. But uh, that's not going to be true in, in general for a general submodular function f. So uh, in other words, in, in, in general, we don't have such luck. Greedy is not optimal. However, uh, we do have a fundamental result that proves that it is within a constant factor of optimal as long as um, I is a is a uniform matroid on K elements. Um, and F is not only submodular, but is also monotone. So let's let's write all of this down. So greedy is not optimal, but we have the following. And this is a theorem due to Nemhauser. Woolsey and Fisher, and it says if I is the uniform matroid, um, in other words, I is an element of I exactly when I has less than k elements, and if f is submodular and monotone, so let me let me uh, let me make um, clarify something I said in the previous in the previous slide. I was mentioning that we assume that i is down monotone, and I and I said that if that this is that it doesn't have to be a matroid. Now, even if it is a matroid, uh, this is just the constraint set. So this doesn't mean that f that f um, is is this weight function of, of a matroid. So even if it were, even if it is a matroid, as it is in the theorem on the next slide, that doesn't mean that greedy is uh, optimal. So I, uh, I should clarify that, that statement that I made before. So if F is submodular and monotone, and I is, this uh, represents the independent sets of the uniform matroid, which is just to say that I represents a cardinality constraint, <clears throat> then the greedy algorithm is within a factor of optimal. Greedy is a 1 minus 1 over E approximation. So let's, let's uh, make sure we understand what that means. So in other words, if the optimal value I denote it by opt. In other words, if opt is equal to this value of maximizing maximum of f of s subject to s and i, and if greedy outputs some hat, some set s hat, then this value f of s hat is at least 1 minus 1 over epsilon times the optimal value. So that's at least 1 minus 1 over e times opt. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what we're going to prove. The proof is going to proceed by induction, and we're going to prove, in fact, a property holds for every single step of the greedy algorithm. So the, what does a greedy algorithm do? In the first step, it's going to look at all possible elements that it can add and still stay in I. I is particularly simple in this example. I mean, in this, in this setting, I is just all sets that have cardinality less than K. So in the first step, S is empty. All elements are, can be added. So it's going to add the element with the largest weight. And then uh, it's going to proceed in that way. In fact, because I is just the cardinality constraint, greedy is going to run for exactly k rounds, and it's going to add an element at, uh, at it's going to add an element at every round, and then it's and then it's going to stop. So uh, let's let S I 
denote the state of S of the greedy algorithm at iteration I. And again, this is going to contain I, uh, the, 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 the first I elements selected by the greedy algorithm. So let S I denote the first I elements selected by the greedy algorithm. We used opt to denote the optimal value, but now I also want to denote the optimal solution, um, not the greedy solution. So let's uh, let, so I should just conclude here. So since our cardinality constraint is K, uh, that means that the greedy algorithm finally outputs the set S hat, which is equal to S K, the Kth element in this, in this series. And let's let C be the optimal solution. So in other words, uh, F of C is going to be this value opt, which we wrote in the previous, uh, in the previous slide. The proof is going to proceed by induction. And our inductive assumption is going to be the following. Um, so the proof is by induction on i, i goes from, from 0 to k. And the inductive assumption says that f of c, this is the optimal value, minus the value of this intermediate uh, set si in the trajectory of the greedy algorithm is at, is, is at most 1 minus 1 over k, k is the cardinality constraint, raised to the i, times f of c, which again, this is the optimal value. So let's, uh, let's we're, this is what we're going to show. And once we show this is true uh, for all i, we're just going to plug in k to get a bound on f of s k. And 1 minus 1 over k raised to the k is e to the minus 1. And that's how essentially this, this proof is going to conclude. Now let's do all the intermediate, intermediate steps. So at step i, what does greedy do? Greedy, it doesn't really need to check. When I gave the full greedy algorithm uh, on, the, on the previous slide, uh, there's a subroutine where greedy constructs this set a. A is checking what are the legal elements that I could possibly add. But in this case, because we have this uniform matroid, every element until we get to the kth step is, all, is always a candidate to be, to be added. So we don't really need to worry about that step. So at step i, greedy simply selects the element, which I'll denote by ei, that maximizes the marginal value with respect to the set SI minus 1, which is where, where we are right now. So that maximizes F of E with respect to SI minus 1. And it maximizes this, of course, over all E that are in the ground set, but not in SI minus 1. Now I claim that F of C minus F of si minus 1 is upper bounded by the sum over all elements e that are in my optimal solution but have not yet been added uh, or have not been added so far to, to, my, to my greedy solution of these marginal values. And this is essentially follows by submodularity. Uh, but let's let's see this let's see these details. So let's uh, let's let's prove this claim. Um, it's a it's a simple it's it's relatively straightforward but but useful for us to to get to get into the swing of, of things. So let's write what these elements are that are in the optimal solution but have not been chosen by our greedy algorithm so far. So this is some collection of elements and I'm just going to denote these by e1. <clears throat> to EL, clearly uh, L is, uh, can't be more than K because uh, C is a legal set. It's the optimal solution. It's feasible and therefore the cardinality of C is at most K. And so the, 
anything, any subset of that will also have cardinality at most k. From here, we're going to use uh, monotonicity. In fact, this is the only place monotonicity is used uh, in this proof. We're going to write a telescoping sum and then use uh, some modularity. So um, the left-hand side here, f of c minus f of si minus 1 is bounded above by monotonicity by f of not just c but enlarging this to contain whatever elements are in si minus 1 but not uh, but not in um, in c minus f of si minus 1 and now I can write this as a telescoping sum and then use submodularity so this is now equal to the sum from m equals 1 to L of F of S I minus 1 union the union of elements from J equals 1 to M of E J minus F of S I minus 1 union the union of elements from j equals 1 to m minus 1 and more by convention this, the union from 1 to 0 would be would be just nothing of ej and you can see that this is uh, again this is this is a telescoping sum so i have equality here and now i'm going to use uh, the i'm going to use um, submodularity here to conclude that this is less than or equal to the sum from m equals 1 to l of the marginal value at the set s i minus 1 of e m. You can see that each one of these terms here is really the marginal value, but with respect to a set that's at least as big as s i minus 1. So this is where this inequality comes from. And now you'll recognize that this is that these two terms are exactly the same. So again, we've used the two properties, two assumptions of, uh, that we need. This is where we used the fact that f is monotone. And this inequality is where we use the fact that f is submodular. And so this proves uh, this claim. So what do we what do we have? Just copying from the previous slide, we've seen that uh, f of the optimal solution minus f of the solution constructed by greedy after i minus one steps is upper bounded by the sum over all of the elements that are in the optimal solution but not in s i minus one of the marginal value of each of those elements with respect to the set si minus 1. And we said that there are at most k of them. All right, so now what, uh, what, what, what does this um, tell us? Remember that we said that ei is the element that greedy adds at time i. It's the most appealing element. And if it's the most appealing element, in particular, that's telling us that its marginal value with respect to s i minus 1 is bigger than all other marginal values. And so it's bigger than all marginal values that are in that, in that sum. So in other words, uh, the marginal value of the set e i, remember e i is the set that is the element that greedy adds at time i, uh, its marginal value with respect to s i minus 1 is certainly going to be bigger than the average of all of these marginal values. So this, in other words, is C minus SI minus 1, that cardinality, times, uh, times that sum, F of SI minus 1 of E. And this is at least 1 over K times f of c minus f of 
s i minus one. Now I used this uh, I used uh, this uh, this inequality that we obtained. And again, I use the fact that c has at most k elements, and so c minus s i minus one has at most k elements. Well, we're pretty close now. So what is uh, what is what does this tell us? This tells us that f of c minus f of s i minus one, which uh, just just from the definitions that we have is equal to um, f of c minus f of oops sorry here f of not of s i minus one but of s i. So s i is equal to s i minus one with this new element e i that we added. This uh, just by our definitions it's equal to f of c minus f of s i minus one minus the marginal value of e i with respect to s i minus one. But this is what I have uh, now lower bounded. So that means that I'm gonna replace this last term with its lower bound and hence I get an upper bound on this quantity. This is upper bounded by f of c minus f of s i minus one, I'm plugging in the bound that we just, that we just wrote up, up top, minus one over k times f of c minus f of s i minus one. And you can see that we've basically proved the inductive step because this is equal to one minus one over k times f of c minus f of s i minus one. And that was the inductive step we needed. And the inductive uh, hypothesis tells me that this is now equal to one minus one over k times, I'm sorry, it's upper bounded by one minus one over k times you know, this quantity, which by the inductive hypothesis is upper bounded by one minus one over k to the i minus one times f of c. So in other words, putting that all together, this I have this, uh, this bound. And now I just need to write, I need to evaluate this at the very last iteration of greedy. And for i equals k, I have f of c minus f of s, uh, s k, the output of greedy, is upper bounded by one minus one over k to the k times f of c which is exactly equal to, I'm sorry, which is, which is upper bounded and is equal to as k goes to infinity, e to the minus one times f of c, which is opt. And if you rearrange these, you get the, uh, the promised bound that f of s k, moving that over to the right, moving the other terms over to the left, is bigger than one minus one over e times opt. In other words, f of c. And that concludes the result on greedy. We're going to keep exploring how to do submodular optimization subject to uh, different constraints um, and uh, more general functions. And we're going to pick that up next time.